Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, my name is Jenny Mackay. Um, I'm one of the digital team at Education Scotland. This afternoon we're going to be covering um, how to access forums, the different um, menu options that are there and how to manage your forums, creating new forums and quizzes with surveys, um, some of the accessibility features that are built into it and where you can take your data after you've used it. Also, um, we'll then look at or discuss a little bit of how it can be integrated with some other Glow products, for example, Team and OneNote. And you'll see that I've also um, popped in our poll in the chat there. It's anonymous, completely anonymous. Even I don't see who's put what. Um, and so that's one of the ways that you can incorporate it in a more ad hoc method. You don't always have to prepare lots of things in advance. Um, then I'll show you where to get help and support at the end. Okay, so so it's accessible on any device, meaning our learners, if we're sharing them, um, if learners are in a hybrid situation, maybe they're having to self-isolate, they can access it on phones, tablets, laptops, etc. It does need to be online. That's the only requirement, though. It can be shared beyond your settings. So many things in Glow are secure for the necessary need to keep our young people safe. Um, however, this is one of the products that can be shared with families and communities of your setting. So you can create a survey and audit parents, etc. Participants can upload coursework. So that's one of the questions that are not often used and um, incorporated. So therefore, um, I'm going to show you this afternoon how you can get your young people to upload coursework. And that can be a nice way for them to submit remotely without having to bring in um, pieces of work. It's also useful um, if you have subjects where um, require information to be submitted to you ahead of time. Um, and so um, if you're in a local authority that maybe does not allow USB pens, using a forum and asking them to share their work that way is a possible option. Also, I'll show you how to incorporate images and video clips. There's specific ways that you can include uh, video clips to your questions and these can enhance, um, especially if you're using uh, strategies and techniques such as spaced learning. Um, so that's where you're coming back to something after a little while. So um, using videos can support reminders. So forms will allow you to ease your workload and workflow. You can prepare things in advance. You can set them up to be available in advance. No having to remember on the day to go in and set it up and we'll cover all of that. The quizzes side of things is fantastic. Self-marking, um, the AI built into it will also prompt you with suggested completion of um, multiple choice questions, which is always good. That's something that can also, if you've been doing a lot of questions with multiple choice, sometimes you run out of things to put in for the different false options. So that AI can help with that. Instant learner feedback means that when your learners have submitted their form, um, they are instantly able to get high quality feedback that you've put in. As I said, this is a tool session versus, rather than a pedagogy session, but I will show you where some research is available. An instant access for uh, participants to contribute. So as soon as it's live, everybody can access it. You can also share it and collaborate on it with others. And we'll look at that too. And as I mentioned earlier, you can export your data. So some core facts that I get asked quite a lot about forums. So this is just for your information. You can have a total of 400 forums available to you. However, I've never come across anybody that's bumped their head on the ceiling. If you do, it's also worth checking the sort of bin area when you get rid of a form that you don't want anymore. It includes those items that are in there. You can create a maximum of 400 polls in teams. And again, these contribute to the overall 400. So 400 doesn't matter where they're created. It's all inclusive. There's a limit of questions. However, it's pretty enormous. And I can't imagine anybody going through a whole a forum with 200 questions in it. But just in case, uh, 200 is the limit at the top end. And that does include the branching options. Um, and a look at Likert statements where you have maybe um, sort of a table of options and people choose which version of that option they like the best or agree with the most. Each one of those statements counts as one question. So even though you've only added one question on the forum, it sees it as multiples. So just to bear that in mind. 
and if you do have a forum and you want to share it with everybody there's a limit of 50,000 responses and um, anything within glow even if you're sharing it beyond it should have educational value and be for learning and teaching okay so as i've said while this is a tool session many of you'll be familiar with researchers hattie and timperley and um, so they've they said the statement before um, and this kind of more applies to the quizzes side of forums than the actual forums but feedback is something that can only um, build on what you're learning so it's the quality of the learning and teaching that's going on in the classroom using different strategies and um, the feedback that you give is second but this does allow you to give that high quality feedback as I mentioned if you've not seen it the EEF produced a report in June this year and they took Patty and Temperley's research to the next step and have highlighted this statement here so it's really important that we give our young people the initial teaching experience and the feedback then can be used to highlight what they're uh, learning and also give them suggestions of how they can address it rather than just the sort of core statements of good work or well done um, it allows them to revisit things and the report that they produced for those of you who've not seen it um, it comes up with six statements um, around the principles, methods and implementation of it. The stuff that we're looking at today predominantly reflects statements one to three and then four to five. Statement six is around your school policy. Um, and again, moving into this more digital pedagogy that we've all sort of had to incorporate last year, but this year um, is hopefully becoming part and parcel of your daily classroom environment or school environment. Um, this is a nice way to maybe, if you aren't already looking at school policies, thinking about how digital um, feedback and evaluation can be provided and forms is just one of the ways uh, that that can be done. And as I've mentioned, um, high quality feedback focuses on the task rather than sort of the response. So how has that young person completed that piece of work or how have they demonstrated their knowledge and do they need to go back? So again, it's the processes, um, self-regulation strategies and supporting young people to plan and monitor and evaluate their work. Um, and that means if we're giving them feedback, where does that sit in that process? The link in here, as you can see there, um, that will take you to that full report. It's quite in depth. But one thing I would also say is that um, high quality feedback, if it's if it's done either through OneNote um, or through forums, anything like that, the low cost impact of it versus uh, the research demonstrated a two month increase in um, attainment and learning uh, it addressed two months worth in the study that they did at secondary age pupils. Um, learners from a higher SIMD, um, it demonstrated up to a one month um, increase. So again, these tools can support that. So moving on to the demonstration of tools. Unlike um, many other products, there isn't a tile for forums. However, you can access it from the 365 button, which is the red one here, if you add that to your launch pad. Alternatively, you can get forums from the top uh, app launcher or waffle depending on what local authority you're in um, at the top area. A couple of things here I just want to cover so you have the recent tiles here so these are ones that you frequently use these tiles are not fixed for the people who may not be familiar with forums uh, the tile that you use most recently so if I for example open up this one Birdsong Primary it's quite far down my list it opens up in, the, in this tab and if I click forums at the top it takes me back to that recent used and it pulls that um, up to the front. There's also a section where you can pin forums that you're using frequently. So if I go in here I might be constantly looking at something, an event that's just happened in my setting and I want to keep tabs on that but I'm using lots of forums in my day-to-day -day classroom for example um, so I can pin a forum. So to do that on any of the tiles I simply select the three dots and I'm given a menu. And if you've been to any of the DigiLearn Scott uh, webinars or you've had a webinar from me before, you'll hear us speaking about these ellipses, these three dots a lot. They do loads of different things. So in that drop down menu, I have this add to pinned option. 
It doesn't remove it from here, but what it does is it gives me this shortcut. So I go in and I can see it at a glance without having to wade through all my other forums. Also, look at sharing forums um, shortly, but if somebody sends you a share link so that you can see the content as it comes in from participants of a forum, or if they want you to co-create a forum, so if you've got a stage partner and they've started it, but they want you to work on it with them, you'll see that appear in this shared with me option. So they might send you a glow link and that's where it appears in here, so shared with me. So if I go in here, here are all the ones that have been shared and you can see the names of the originating author of the forum. Okay, so, we have our tiles here. We can also change the view. So if you're not a visual person, but you prefer to have things in lists, you don't have to have it. Um, if you, it depends on everybody's preference. And you can also search through your forums at a glance. So if you are one of those people that's created a vast quantity of forums, you might want to search for it by keyword. And there's a filter tool at the side. However, one of the nifty new features is available here. So two things at the bottom of that. I just scrolled down. I've got show more, which lets me see more forums. But if I keep scrolling, I can choose this all my forums option that's hidden down at the bottom. Selecting that will show me the complete list of all of my forums as it describes. One of the new features though that's really exciting for those of you who maybe have been using it before is this collections option. So what that is, is a way to kind of create folders for your forums. So um, if like me, uh, you've previously maybe used like different backgrounds to try and categorize things, this stops you having to do that so much. They'll still appear in recent. It doesn't affect where they sit in recent. However, if we put in here, so I'm just gonna create a folder and say demo, create. You can see I've now got this folder here and I can drop or I can move to a collection. So I selected my three dots, move to collection, and I can choose a folder. So if I go up here, this is the one from the poll that we did. So any polls that you submit in a, a team space automatically appear here too. I can see I've got six people responded, move it to the collection and we'll just move it to demo. It's still able to capture data. It's no longer in this big pile. So it allows me to see all of the forums that I want. I can add a new forum directly in site. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Or I can go back and I can add more. You can't add multiples at once, um, but you can select, move, and then choose the collection that you want. If you don't want it in the collection, you just go into the folder and you would move it back. One other thing is, so I've gone from my recent, scrolled down, selected all my forms again, a new tab will open again. And I just want to highlight that your recycle bin is in here. So if you do have a forum, for example, let's just use this one. So we've got this form here. We don't need it anymore. Select three dots and just delete it. If you want to share it with a group, issue it out to a team, you also have the option to do that there so you can move it to a group. You can also take a copy of a forum without it taking any of the background data. So if every year you do a pre-unit test, sort of a prior knowledge test, or if you um, are doing an annual survey to audit understanding or the need for something, Simply select the one that you used before. So if we use this one here, this practice maths quiz, oops, sorry. Select the three dots, just let it catch up with me. Select the three dots, select copy. And you'll see I've now got a practice maths quiz. It tells me this is the second copy of it. I've already got the original at the bottom, but you can see no responses have come in from it. So that's quite handy as well. So it means that you don't have to completely change it uh, just to rewrite it every year. You can then go in and edit it in any way that you want. How do we create our forms and quizzes? 
So the fastest and easiest way is when you open up forums on your computer, select this option. It's automatically set to quizzes, but you can create a new forum for surveys, things like that. So we'll start with a, a forum and then we'll move on to uh, quizzes with uh, feedback. So within here, when you start your form up, you have a blank screen, you can give it a title and you can give it an image. Let's think our interdisciplinary learning was around space. If I search for the word space, you'll notice that it automatically searches Creative Commons licensed images. These are copyright free images that your young people can use. So again, if you're thinking about um, completing this as part of your topic and asking your young people to create a forum or you want to use it, you don't have to worry about copyright or you could use it as a le part of your lesson in technologies around copyright um, and introduce them to the Creative Commons licenses um, and talk about ownership of images, etc. So let's just select the first image that's there and we'll add it. We can also add our learning intention and success criteria underneath then we can add new questions as we're going. So from there in, we're able to ask questions. So before I go any further with this, I'm going to personalize the background. So because this is a space one, I've gone up here and I've selected theme and I can choose a themed background depending on the age and stage of your learners or who you want to share it with. I can also choose a simple color background or I can choose to add my own. So I can use it from customizable color or I can upload an image depending on what I want it to do. Once you've selected what you want, oops, let me just move this box. You simply click onto your forum and that pop-up window disappears. At any time when you create your forum, you can use preview. You can see it in the computer version and you can also see what it might look like for a young person on a phone. So here we're going to do one that's reviewing their understanding. So here we've got our image, we've got a title and I'm going to start to add questions. So you saw there that anytime I want to add a question I can use this add new button. When I select add new I can choose from a range of questions. So there's four main question types that people tend to stick with. Multiple choice allows me to type in a question so so I can go through and I can add on as many as I want. I can then choose multiple choice and I can choose to have multiple answers be allowed. I can make a question be required, mandatory for that young person or not mandatory. When you generate a text question that allows you to choose a long answer which is approximately two to three average length paragraphs or a short answer, which is approximately four sentences. So in here, when you type in a question, you can again choose that image box, but you can choose to add in a video link. You can only choose to add a stream video. So if you already have a stream attached to a team, you might want to use some of the recordings that you've used there or you can use any YouTube video clip that you feel is appropriate for the lesson that you're doing, having obviously vetted it. So here I've got, um, if you've not seen them, Crash Course make a uh, really useful um, and interesting um, educational videos. So I've got one on the solar system, so I'm going to copy the link to it. I'm going to go back and I'm simply going to paste in the link that I just took. I'm going to add that in here and my video will play inside my quiz. So again, this means that we could be um, revisiting some learning that's gone on. I, it depends on your school and your local authority setting. You may already have a YouTube channel, so you might be revisiting a learning experience that you've captured and you're sharing with your young people or it might be something that you're sharing uh, that demonstrates learning if they're not in school so that they can see what has taken place. You would then ask the questions. So here we want them to um, help me remember the order of the planets and we're gonna get them to create 
a mnemonic to tell me that and that's what they're going to produce in here so at the bottom this is an introduction to that so it's giving them some key information they can watch it and then they have to create their own mnemonic when you're happy with the question again you can change it at any time make it required mandatory or not mandatory okay so we've added in a text question we've added in a video if we then go underneath we can choose a rating so this is where we might ask young people to uh, demonstrate what how they feel about something and they can choose between stars or numbers so rate how they feel so we can ask them to do that and we can also choose what the rating is we can choose between uh, 2 and 10 for that so we'll stick with 10 and then we can choose to again make it mandatory or not we can also choose to set targets for young people. So we might ask them a text question here. Um, this is an activity that happens a lot in primary school where we ask, or at the start of each term, um, where you're asking young people to set out their target for the term ahead or their New Year's resolution, for example. So here we could be asking them to set um, an educational target for themselves. And we then could say to them, okay, well, give yourself a review date. When do you want to try and attain or achieve that by? Um, and it could be like a personal goal. It could be whatever they want. Choosing the date option would complement the text question that you might have. This also could be used in history, you know, what is the date of, etc. And then all that would happen is when they are completing it, they're given a calendar. So all that they'll see is this little calendar button. When they click it, they get the sort of traditional digital calendar that they would scroll through and click on and collect a date from. So these, uh, the date questions are quite handy if you're doing history topics, etc. So some of the things that you may not be using yet are from this drop down menu at the end so i've selected add a new question i've gone along to the end and i have this drop down menu and i'm going to choose one of the options that's here so the first one i'm going to focus on is this file upload that i mentioned in my introduction so as i said file upload allows the young person or participant of your form or quiz um, to add files and send them directly to you and importantly your OneDrive. Now to, again to go back over keeping Glow safe and secure these questions if you use an upload questions they are limited to only Glow users so whilst you can share a forum beyond Glow if you include one of these file upload questions that becomes only Glow users and that's because um, anybody with a Glow account, we ask them to adhere to the Glow community rules um, and to follow any um, user agreements that local authorities uh, ask them to sign. So just to be aware, if you do add this question, when it comes to sharing, and we will look at that towards the end, that will remove that share, uh, share beyond, you know, uh, the organisation, which is Glow uh, option for you. Okay, so we're going to get them to take a list of photographs that they want um, and we're going to ask them to detail it later on in a different question or we might want to just ask them to upload their coursework. You might want to also include an image to give them some ideas, you might want to give them a longer introduction and so on. Once you've done that you then select how many files you want to upload so you can allow them to have a maximum of 10 and each of those files then has a maximum of one gigabyte, but you set the maximum um, for them. So if you were asking them to take photographs, for example, on their phone, um, and you only want them to upload one photograph, you wouldn't need it to be one gigabyte. You probably want maybe 100 megabyte. That's probably plenty. Um, if it's a photograph of a drawing something, if it was a video or a 30 second clip demonstrating something, you would want them to maybe have the one gigabyte limit. Um, so they might also need to do something in sections because one gigabyte for a video is still quite small. So say you wanted them to create a stop motion animation, um, you might want them to create the start, the middle and the end, thinking about that story arc. So you would want three sections of one gigabyte each. Once you've got that, you can then move on to your next question to put in more detail or add information. But um, if I just go up to here, 
Once you're sharing your forum, I just wanted to show you in your files, in your OneDrive space, you'll see a folder appear called apps. And anytime you issue a file upload question, a folder will appear, if it's not already there now, for Microsoft forums. And inside that forum is the, um, is the name of any forum that you have got an upload question in. So here you can see mine's are, because I don't have a class anymore, mine's are mainly demonstrative. So I have, for example, one or two questions each. So if we go into this review, your understanding, I've now got two upload questions available in there. Um, question one and question two. So um, it lets me see nobody's uploaded any files, but if they had, it would let me see what they were. So just want to flag that up to you. So other types of questions, I'm going to come out of this forum and I'm going to go into my Birdsong Primary School again. So here we've got an early learning centre in primary school where we have created a space and we've asked, we're asking for families to give us some feedback. The reason I'm doing this is it's an easy way to demonstrate to you um, the liker options um, that you, I mentioned earlier. So each one of these statements counts as a question and all that we've done in here is we've gone add new question, gone along to the end and this one we've chosen a like it. So this is what this kind of question is here. When you get that, you're given this blank box. You give yourself a question for your young people to say how they feel about something. So again, this is a really useful one um, to use if you want to capture how someone feels about their learning, etc. Nothing sensitive should ever be shared or um, put into GLOW, uh, nothing that would be deemed as sensitive. However, it's a nice way to use as an exit poll kind of thing. Um, and the example that we created would be um, thinking about the outdoor environment. This is one that we want to maybe share with families. So some questions and we're asking families when they get the link, they simply select that option. We also have put in here, as you can see here, one of those, um, the, the ratings. So we've used our rating question here as well. And we've given a definition of what one and 10 is. The net promoter score, again, is similar to um, the sort of ratings or like hertz. So it's, it's up to you if you want to use those ones rather than uh, the initial. And then a ranking one. So in ranking, you give people options and then they get little grab handles which move around when they're issued. So these little bars become options and they can move them once the question, the form is active for them to sort of complete. Okay, so once you've created a form and you have issued it, all of your data comes back like this. You'll see how many people have responded you'll see how long it took on average to complete it and whether your forum is active or not. So active um, forums are forums which are available with the link to be completed. You can stop it um, from being active in the settings and I'll look at that in just a section, second because you can use start and end dates and I'll show you what it would look like if it was closed. So we just say closed. Below that, you can delete all the responses. Now, there's not very many reasons that you would do that. You'd probably either delete the whole thing because you could take a copy of your forum. Um, but say you, you did a wee test run, you could delete all the responses there um, so that they're not available to you anymore. You can also print a summary, which is handy if you want to give it out uh, uh, or hand it in as part of your planning or um, evidence for like inspections, things like that. And you can also send a member of, for example, your senior leadership team or department head a summary link. Your results are also able to be viewed individually. So as you're scrolling through, you can see who said what and you can scroll down. You'll see here that it says anonymous. That's because when I shared my forum, which I'll just show you now, 
when I've gone to share, I have different options at the very top. If I set it to anyone can respond, it's completely anonymous. I have no way to capture who is submitting the forum. However, a workaround for that, so if you don't want people to have to log into Glow to complete the forum, but you do want to get some information from them, please be aware for GDPR regulations and speak to your local authority about capturing information and uh, don't capture anything you don't need. And again, nothing personal that should be stored in there. But if you did want to use the open link, you could put a mandatory question stating like, what is your name? What is your class? If it's a learner activity. Um, alternatively, if you want it to automatically capture, you can say only people in my organization. And when I go to that, you'll see that it tells me that the owner of the forum sees your name and your email address or your Glow account. If you have it anonymous, that statement is just not there at all. So anyone can respond, literally anyone with the link or only specific people in the organisation. And again, organisation refers to Glow or specific people. So you might want to send it to a specific learner group, working party, etc. Here you've got a link that you can attach into emails, etc. And for those of you who maybe have used this before, I just want to highlight there's now a shortened URL, which makes it enormously shorter than it ever, ever used to be. Um, alternatively, you um, can use the really long one, but that shortened one's a great button. And if you have a setting where you want um, people to maybe come in for parents night and you want to scan the scan it as they go or you want to capture you know you've maybe shared some experiences at assembly and you want uh, the, the young people if they have their own devices or if they have uh, school devices you want them to give you live feedback you can use a qr code that can then be either snipped using snipping tools or screenshots or you can download it as a jpeg you can also embed the code. So if you have a school blog, etc., you can take an embed code. And this mail button is there, but we generally advise that you don't use it because it doesn't tend to sync up in most authorities with your Glow mail. So if you are sharing it and you want to put it in an email, just use the link button. Further down the sharing side, you'll see that there's a template. So if you've got a stage partner who's seen the work that you've created in the forums or quizzes that you're writing, you can take a link and duplicate it and give them a copy. So they get the questions, they don't see any of your responses and whatever changes they make, you don't see. It's essentially like photocopying it and letting them do what they want with it. Um, so that can be handy if you maybe are happy to share something, but you don't want them to edit your own. However, if you and your stage partner are working on something collaboratively, for example, or you want to share uh, the information that's coming in, you can use this collaborate link. Everybody, uh, you have to name the person and um, everybody can see the responses as they come in. So essentially everybody sees everything and everyone has the same rights. This isn't something that you would share with a young person. This is something for uh, professional use. Um, however, young people may want to use this to co-collaborate on a piece of work that they are going to submit to you to demonstrate understanding or share with another working group in the classroom. So that can be a really nice way that they are all taking a role in completing different sections of it. Okay. I did also mention the setting. So a couple of things. Um, you might want to have paper forms uh, for different reasons for accessibility, some accessibility features. Um, and I should point out, if I go to my questions, if you hover over any of the questions once it's um, out there, so if I just go to here, you'll notice that we've got this little book with a speaker button at all of the questions if I hover over them. So if I hover over it there, it will read the question aloud to that young person. Um, and we're not going to go over too much of this, uh, but I just want you to, if you do see that sign, it's on Word, it's on Bing, um, it will allow you to play the question. Which room is the child in your care remember? End of question. 
Where's the reader to input your answer? It gives them information, but if you have any learners where English is uh, a second language, what you can do is go into the reading preferences and they can automatically see it in a different language that suits their needs. So again, not only have we got the accessibility thing, it's inclusive as well. So uh, that's what happens when the form is shared. So we've taken our link, we've pasted it in the uh, email or tab just to check um, and we've got that. But you might also want paper copies and now you can print the form. That wasn't there previously. Whereas now, if you go in, it will allow you to take a copy. It will show you how long your form is and you get a paper copy that you can print off. It will also let you save it as a PDF. So if you select print, you can then save it to your OneNote, you can save it to there or you can print it. So three dots, print form, change the language of the actual form as you're creating it or sharing it online. So again, that doesn't work quite as smoothly, I would say, as using the immersive reader, but it is available to you. And what happens is you select your primary language and additional language. So if we select, for example, German, um, or French, let's do French. What will then happen is when someone's viewing it, up at the top, you'll see that they can switch between the two languages uh, so that it suits them. You just would have to make them aware that that's where they go. But it's a little bit like using um, Google Translate on a live web page. It's just, it's within the forum. So again, they're not having to go anywhere else other than the page that they're on. And then lastly, up in this top corner, we've got settings. So again, we can also revisit what we're saying in here about who can fill it out and we can use slightly more granular information. If we're saying it's only people in our organisation within GLOW, we can choose what it is we want to record. Do we want only one response per person? Do we want to capture their name? Um, or is it just that we only want GLOW recipients to, uh, GLOW users to complete it? Um, so again, you can choose all of those there. This is the most handy one. If you're prepping your lessons in advance, you might want to have it with a specific start date. So if you're seeing a class, if you're secondary and you're seeing them on the first period of the week, you might want the forum not to be available until 9.45, just before you don't they leave your classroom, depending on your timetable, um, so that you've shown them it, but they can't sit in class and kind of do it. It's got to be once they've left, it's homework and it's an activity. Or you might want them only to do the activity whilst they're with you in your classroom space. So you might want to start it at 9 or 8.45, and then you want to end it at the end of your period. So you would select date and you would select the time. You can also choose to shuffle your questions. Um, if it's a, a quiz, you can choose it so that the person sitting next to another person isn't seeing the questions in the same order. And you can choose to customise the message. So you can give them like, now that you've completed this, go to X, Y and Z. So you could paste some uh, top tips, what to do next. You can put some uh, generic feedback in. You could also, however, if you want to put that high quality, you could give them suggestions. So if it is a quiz, you might want them to say, uh, if you got any incorrect, try repeating the activity. So it's no point in giving them the answer. Um, you might want them to, to go off and retry something. Um, so you can pop that information in there. Again, you can be notified if you every time a submission comes in so that you know to check it if this is something that's new to you um, until you get in the way of it. Um, and you can also, if they have their Glow account, if it's only for Glow users, they can get a receipt um, of what they've submitted as well. So I mentioned quizzes and feedback. I just want to let you see what that looks like. So at the top, create new quiz. You'll see it shows you questions. You, when you complete your question, you write in, give it an image, give it the date, and you can pop in information. You also identify the correct answer. So you could select which one is correct and so on. 
So just as we did, uh, uh, just as I showed you before, create your question, add new. The only kind of question that I haven't shown you that I'm going to take one moment just to show you quickly is maths. You can use these with built-in maths. So here you'll see I've got a quiz. It's identifying for me the correct answer. The recipient doesn't see that until they complete the form. Um, select add new, scroll down. Oops. That's not right. Let me try that again. Select add new, multiple choice. And in here, we're going to choose the maths option here. So we can put in an equation. So 16 add x equals 20, click OK. So I could say solve, and you'll see the AI that I mentioned at the very start has suggested uh, what kind of answers I might want. It's also identified the correct answer for me. You can then pop in your feedback for your young people um, to put in information. So maybe go back and revisit a unit, uh, look over a piece of work, come and have a discussion with you, um, suggesting which of the space learning activities from previously you might want to use and so on. So you can choose multiple options and you can award points here as well. Add new, multiple choice. Select the three dots and maths. Just make sure maths is there for you. We're not looking at branching today because as I said, this is an introductory session. If this has been useful and you'd like to learn a little bit more specifically about Teams, you're ready to play about with it, drill down. Um, there are some uh, Microsoft uh, Educator Center courses. These are available, you can access Microsoft Educator Center from the Glow Scotland launchpad, that's the very bottom at the left hand side. Um, you can click this link from the PDF and there's lots there. There's learning pathways, there's um, professional learning material and there's also badged courses. None of them have a cost, it's all free, but you will need to sign up with your Glow account. Um, also, Digilearn Scott, the national team that I'm part of, um, has a huge range of resources available for you on Microsoft 365 products, forms being one of them. This QR code and image will take you to the page, but if you Google Digilearn Scott, you'll also find it. In the professional learning section, select 365 and you will see a whole range of resources. Furthermore, Education Scotland has a Glow team um, and they have a site for called Glow Connect. Again, it's on the Scotland launchpad within Glow. There's a really useful section called Help with Glow. And if you select Microsoft 365, it gives you technical information um, around all of the different products, again, including Glow. This is also a really useful site if you're looking for information and guidance to, to maybe share with parents. 